Now, if you then carry on driving that car with no water pump for spinning, you've got a very good chance that you could boil the engine over, which is exactly what the customer did. Why? Why would you do that? Hi there, welcome back to the channel and to another car pitch update video. Now in our last episode on the pitch, we were talking about basically what's been going on with sales. We got down to about five or six cars left on site for actually for sale. We got to hardly anything ready to go out. We've been too busy trying to get the sold cars out, neglected obviously the stuff on site going on sale. So really we didn't have much left to sell. Now, since then we've managed to restock up a little bit, managed to get some cars off site, some sort of part X's and trade stuff that needed going, managed to buy some new stuff in, including some auction cars as well, which you may have already seen, or you'll see in an auction video shortly, and also a couple of private purchases as well. So we're gonna have a quick look around the pitch, see what's come in, what's been gone out, what's sold, and also have a chat about a warranty claim, uh, which I've had to deal with, which has really annoyed me, but I think we may have got there in the end. But nonetheless, I'll tell you the story about what's gone on there as well. So anyway, let's have a look around the car pitch. Okay, so we'll start off in the corner, as you can see. We've got quite a lot of stock on. We've got quite a lot of cars. Not all of this is all for sale, by the way. And some stuff you've probably already seen before. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the basics. First thing everyone wants to know is the yellow Fiat is still here, so don't worry about that. Uh, I will do a video on that when I finally get that car uh, back off to auction. We're going to get rid of it uh, and basically uh, spunk a look of money on because it uh, was a bad buy that as we've seen in a video a few months ago anyway that's still here depresses me every time i look at that i've had no movement on the ka nothing really as much help out has happened in pyx corner one or two little bits have developed and gone but nothing really of any news there anyway let's have a look on the front row because that's where it's all happening so we have managed to get some cars back on sale there was a lot of stuff in the in the gaps between last time we were here basic stuff awaiting prep we have managed to get some cars physically done prepped and ready and on sale and actually some rather interesting stuff pretty broad as well from I mean, literally a few cars from sort of 12 1500 quid to three or four grand we'll start from the back here we've got a uh, citroen c1 on sale we bought this in the auction a few weeks ago sure this actually i think i did an auction video on this one it is now back it has been cleaned, although by the looks of it, it looks like it hasn't again, because no sooner did we wash them here that two days later they seem to be all covered in muck again from the road. But it has generally been the valet as it actually is really clean inside, actually. Um, nice old thing. It's done about 75,000 miles. Typical C1. Like I said, these are good news. These We sell these pretty much probably about one a week. We get rid of these. Uh, we love these. £2,750. It's a uh, £20 road tax. Cheapy car. They say they fly them out the door all the time. Got an i10 as well. I was bought at the same auction. Just pull that way back in a minute so you can see it properly. Uh, that was bought at the same auction at Prees. Drives extremely well. Had that validated as well. That's up to 2995. Again, low mileage. Only done 64,000 miles. So it's been for a valet as well. Not much to do to this one. Uh, got a few of the job cards raised on it. I think it's down for an auxiliary belt pulley, which we're going to get on this week. That's why it's still awaiting prep. But it is driving absolutely lovely. It doesn't need, doesn't need too much that one to get that looking right. Really clean car, like I said, with 64 foul on. It's got full history. It's a one former keeper car. Just a proper little thing that we do usually do all right with i10s as well. We don't usually hang around too much. Uh, so we we'll, uh, should be looking to get rid of that pretty quickly as well, all being well. Uh, Fiesta, that was down the bottom there. That was uh, my uh, landlord's car. We've moved that over here. Give a bit of a spruce up, had a bit of a shine up, a bit of a polish. Uh, price reflected as well. It's moved down the pricing board. Put it down now, I think we've got about 23.95. Bit mileagey, done about 120. Um, but it is a 1.2 petrol, it's a good engine in it. Had a test drive on it this morning, starting to get interest. I think we'll probably get rid of that in the next few days because we're starting to attract some interest for it. Like I said, it's a bit mileagey, that's why it's sort of lingered around a bit. But it will go. Like I said, it is good value for, for what it is, and they are reliable things, the little 1.2 Fiestas. Moving on, you'll see here the uh, Skoda's still here, that's been cleaned up. Drop price drops, I'll have a look at that in a sec. The insignia was there, that's the MOT, because that has sold. Subscribers bought that, that black insignia. I'll put a picture here of that, if you remember that one. A nice car, that, not my cup of tea, but I had to buy it. Uh, anyway, guy came on, a subscriber, looked at it, bought it. Did have a dilemma with that, actually, the day he came to view it, the battery died on it. So I had to put a brand new battery on. It was an original battery on it, in fairness to it, which was is what it is. But a new stop-start battery at 100 and odd quid, costing me, is that now on it, and uh, you know, started up and running again, beautiful again. Anyway, that's gone off to MOT, so we'll get that sorted for him. Get that out this week, so I'm really pleased with that insignia. Uh, a little cheapy I bought. I bought this off a trader friend of mine. Bit of an old, really, these now, these old school, these courses. But I thought, do you know what? I'll buy this one. A little low mileage course, or SXI, on a 2006 plate. I think it's only done about 60, 
64, 65,000 miles. Um, just want a bit of a click clean. I've just shoved it in here for now, just put a prize board in it. I have got a quick valley, but just wanting a quick wash over really, because it's a bit, a bit manky on the outside over the weekend. It's just a, accumulated a bit of dirt. So it's on my list this afternoon to give it a wash over. But even before it's been, been washed and cleaned properly, it still looks a really presentable old car. Like I said, it's done about 60,000 miles. It's been serviced with an inch of its life, honestly. It's been serviced every year without fail. It's the best course of sea I've ever driven. I used to I used to buy and sell a lot of these, and by far the best one I've ever driven. A little cheapy. Some say it might be a little bit tad dear, but I think with 60 foul on it, and the way it drives, it's a good little car for someone. So it's not chainy or anything like that. It's a proper thing, drives superb, been serviced all its life. Like I said, it's a nice thing. We'll see how we go with that. We always get asked for cheapies. Someone wants a budget, so I want some MOT, put a warranty on it, low mileage car. No reason why you can't get a few years out of that easily. So we'll see how we go with that. Uh, the D Skoda, we've seen this many a times before. This has come back from paint recently. Instead of a washing a brush up, dropped the price as well to 24.95. Little 14 diesel. Nice old thing this. It does drive exceptionally well this. And really nice click clean car. It runs 74,000 miles as well. I love driving this, it's just superb. And like I said, we'll do probably what, 60, 70 miles to the gallon they will do. It's a really cheap old little bus. Dead spacious as well. Shock that hasn't sold. Probably gonna have to put that on Auto Trader, I think. I think that's gonna be a bit of a, a niche car for someone, but there we go, it is what it is. Moving down the row, we've had a bit of a, a change around. We've got, um, used to have a big row here of cars. We've now moved that around a bit. So we've got the Mondeo here, a little two litre Mondeo, uh, 24.95 and 11 plate we've had in. Um, we've also got a little 107 here as well. Nice thing on a facelift, 32.95. Again, I think that's only done about 80,000 miles. So that's, um, that's in as well. So nice thing, we've got a, got a bit of a selection of stock going on. We're starting to get some stuff back on sale, you know what I mean? And we can actually get some stuff out there to people to buy. So like I said, this area now has sort of become a bit of an allocation area. We're going to put stuff in, we're working on. Just a bit of an overflow, really, because it was just getting a bit of a mess, the site. So we're just sort of focusing and keeping the main strip here, sort of the cars, and then just as we can make a bit more room, we'll uh, start to plonk stuff further down the line and maybe get a second row going. But at the moment, as you can see, We've been, a bit, uh, we've been a bit mad on the old buying front. We've been buying up stuff as well. I've had another ruck of cars dropped off today and a few part X's. We've got this Megane, which we've uh, uh, bought from auction the other week. I don't think I filmed this. This is a 2012 Renault Megane 1.6 petrol. Um, so it's a nice, nice old thing, this. Uh, I've had a bit of paint done on it. It's um, pretty sure we haven't seen this on the channel before or filmed it. But uh, it had a bit, of a bit of a ding here on this bumper. So the paint man sorted that out, it's come back from paint, did it all, got it all sorted for us. Like I said, it's uh, looking well again, in uh, a nice like a goldy champagne colour. Hasn't been valid or anything. Got the key somewhere, I'm sure I have the key. That's got keyless entry. There we go. Hasn't been valid or anything, he's going to the valeters. Um, but it drives very, very well. Ordered a new gear knob for it, because every one of them seems to look like it's had leprosy in these Renaults. So I've ordered a new one of those. But other than that, other than needing a valet, it isn't too bad. Everything works on it, all the windows work, which is good, because they usually pack up. Done about 83,000 miles. Retails are quite strong money, actually. I haven't given a lot for that. It, um, I think we bought that in auction for around 15, 1,600 quid. Have had to have it painted. I think that's what was really sort of causing a bit of a price reflection on that one. But uh, the paintwork wasn't as bad, actually, as it, it looked. Um, if I have got a picture of it somewhere, we'll put it up. I'm, I can't remember if I did film it or not, so uh, bear with me on that one. Later shape one as well, that the sort of semi face lift before they changed over the shape. It's a nice old thing, and it's and they drive really well. These one six petrol, probably the one you'd I'd probably want to go for. One five diesel's not a bad engine as well. You haven't got all the acetylene of sort of modern diesels, and again, not Euro six compliant if it's a diesel. So, um, like I said, it's a nice thing. We're going to come back to that when it's all polished up. I might even take that out on a run and show you because they get a bit slated Renaults actually in fairness and, and, I, and I actually think they're quite decent cars those begans so we might cover that in another video when that's all nice and bright again what else have been dropped off we've got a Suzuki Swift here that's been dropped off recently um, that's uh, one I'm going to have to look at got that off a mate of mine to be honest with you buttons money not paid a great deal for that I know it wants a clutch um, so we're going to put clutch in it usually on these ones to worry about the corrosion on subframes are very common you can buy the subframes it's not the end of the world and gearboxes so I did make it clear to him, I said, if it's got a noisy gearbox, I don't want it. Because um, they are renowned, these one threes and one five petrol Suzuki's for noisy boxes. We have done a few over the years. And to be honest with you, at the moment, we don't need any more gearbox work. We've got plenty of KAs and Fiat's that we need gearboxes. So we don't need a Suzuki to add to it. 
he assured me that the box is fine um, although it has got a slippy clutch but you can drive it and uh, the box seems to be okay i mean it's not the end of the world fixing the box but they are about 400 quid to re rebuild so we don't really want to be going down that route on an 06 plate suzuki um but say hopefully if just put a clutch in it clean it up we might make a car out of it we might come back to that at a later date uh, worst case scenario for what i paid for that it was about 400 quid um, I could probably just flip that on in the tray if someone would want to buy that and just put a clutch in themselves. So, a bit of a no-brainer, that one. I'd like to retail it, because they are good news, these little Suzuki's. But if we if it's going to be too much work for us, and we, you know, there's, there's other ta other things we could put our time and effort in, we might just flip it. We'll see how we go with that. So, here we've had a bit of progress on that. We've just started to get it all finished off. Put some new number plates on it the other day. Threw up an engine light the other day as well, just to sod's law. Been stood around, really. So, it threw up an engine light, Lamber sensor, very common on the box holes, Lamba sensor, always bank one sensor too for some reason. You know, we keep them in stock. So put a new Lamba sensor in that, been homing it and come back again and it's been fine ever since. So pleased with that. Got a man for that one, a subscriber who's uh, very keen to buy that. So I just need to get that finished off and get it on sale. And remember this, we bought this from auction. Uh, I think we even did a video on it actually. I had a rock of paint on it because it was in right mess. It was all scratched here and scratched the opposite side. Anyway, it's all been done, um, although you could come in do it at the moment um, but that has all been painted so we need to get that sorted as well sort of finished off clean up valeted and obviously uh, look to uh, get it all sorted on sale and uh, got a man waiting to buy it I've got to put a couple of back lights in it typical severe always full of water but i've got a couple of lights to go in it so another one we've got to tackle this week like i said we've got plenty of work to do it's not a case of uh, struggling for work we're just uh, it's just trying to work out what we start and fix first really little suzuki uh, sorry little ci beefer um I've got two of these, so I've got one on the ramp over there, which we had in off a private customer, uh, local, walked in the gate, bought it off him, um, gave oh, I think about trade money for it, about 11, 1200 quid. We have just sold that, it's on the ramp now. Uh, mechanics just uh, putting some rear shockers on it, because they're common, little one four petrol one. So we sold that, and then no sooner did we sell that, that we sold a Kia Venga, a 13 plate Kia Venga which we had um, on the pitch uh, was probably over there somewhere if I have got a shot of it I'll show you but that was um, sold and the per person who bought that had this in part exchange which is another identical uh, 09 plate uh, say at Ibiza 1.4 petrol again basically a non-runner I'm hoping we can get it running it's done about 100,000 miles so it's going a little bit more than the template one we just sold but other than that they're very similar cars it's basically the story behind it is it was running and then it started misfiring she managed to get it home a neighbor came over who was in the aa scanned it said it's got a coil pack problem the someone has then put a coil on it because they've got individual coils on it and then from then onwards never got it running again so it has been messed with someone's messing with the coils it does try and start as though it's got compression but it just sounds like it's either got no fuel or more likely no spark so could be a crank sensor issue we're not sure we're not even looked at it we're just going to obviously come back to that at a later date if we can get that running there is a nice profit in that car however it could be something catastrophic electrical fault you just don't know but it'd be worth throwing a bit of money at i gave 250 pound in part exchange for that because in reality it was a non-runner so we get that running well that's it we're all that is booked for this year other purchases to make today i've got this uh, uh, Turan that's just come in literally about an hour or so ago and have this on the uh, horizon uh, this is a uh, uh, 16 petrol Turan. i was believed to, i was told it was a diesel but it actually is a petrol one but never mind um to be honest if i probably prefer the petrol less hassle 16 diesel not a bad engine but can suffer injector fault so uh, i will buy them but they have to be really careful with them uh, two liter diesel is probably the one you want um however 16 petrol um, you less compliant we've got to remember that is a bit mileagey so it's done 120,000 miles but does drive extremely well uh, nice blue as well it's a nice car seven seater we don't get many seven seaters on so i have to take what comes gave a grand for it and a, a grand a little bit of change that sort of logbook out for it as well so um i'm quite pleased with that on a template uh, what's it worth not sure yet not done my research got a rough idea got, got to do a spring on it because it has broke a spring so we'll put a set of springs on uh, and just give it a pdi and go from there really like i said it's only just landed it was sensible money so i thought sod it got a little mark in the seat there to allow to fix that I might just stitch that up really to be honest it's not really too big but other than that it ain't too bad a five speed manual seems all right to be fair it's just like i said it's a cheap seven seater um not too bad pretty clean in there everyone's wanting a bit of a valet wants a back bumper sort of painting really it's a bit chippy probably will get that done in this corner as well 
to paint the back bumper the rest of the car is actually other than once cleaning and a bit of a mop up will actually come up really well so we'll see how that goes on in the, in another update video because that uh, may make a car that and like i said they're quite decent things these tarans are a bit of an alternative to the sort of sphere as you see commonly or a lot only the seven seaters so it's nice to get a tyran on right this corsa um now this is the uh, warranty claim we're talking about this has been we sold this car about ooh, nearly three months ago because it was eight days before the warranty expired uh, anyway not that we necessarily would have abandoned the customer even after the warranty expired because we would have helped anyone but anyway nonetheless a little 1.4 petrol corsa sxi we bought this in pre's in fact it may may have even been on the channel i think it was on the video where we bought four cars and we filmed them uh, on that day and we went and picked them all up uh, i'll find some footage of it i'll put it there for you but uh, like i said did a bit of work to it um nothing really too major i think it ended up having a rock cover put on it um that was really it to be honest with you um shockers we had to put shockers on it and brakes that was it so it's had all new shockers on it and all new brakes anyway this car has been the culprit for me being particularly cross over the last week or so anyway it's about to rain so i'm gonna get myself in the dry and i'll tell you what's going on with this uh, warranty claim so what has happened with this Corsa? Well, it's a warranty claim, as I mentioned, and uh, basically it's come in the other day. The customer's basically had a fault with the vehicle. The, the auxiliary belt has come off. Now, I've had the car about just under three months. It's still under warranty. You know, we'll happily get it fixed. No issues at all. Pick the car up, get it back here, sort it out, find out what's gone on and rectify the issue. Like I said, the customer rang up, told us as an issue. Uh, I spoke to my colleague first. I then rang them back and said, right, let's get it sorted, let's get it in, whether that's somewhere local or get it back here. But first of all, just go through what's gone on, let me know what's happened, and I can best establish what the best outcome is. Now, as the customer's explaining to me, they've been driving the car actually really locally. In fact, at the time, they were literally only 500 yards away from our garage when this uh, event happened. The customer lives about 12 miles away from here, but ironically, they were in the town of Crewe at the time where we're based. They basically heard a noise under the bonnet, engine lights have come on, sort of heard like a bit of a flapping noise going on under the bonnet. Like I said, got battery lights on, engine warning lights on, the car's not running right, they've clearly got a issue. Now, the guy's pulled over, which is the correct thing to do, and it's done established what has happened. Now, this guy's got a little bit of mechanical knowledge, should we say, he's actually studying mechanicking. He quickly established that there was an error, uh, and he's also established that the auxiliary belt has fallen off the car. Now, the auxiliary belt on a Corsa drives the alternator, the air conditioning, and the water pump two most important things there water pump and the alternator if the belt falls off which what's happened in this case there's no charge going to the alternator and there's no water being circulated around the engine from the water pump now if you then carry on driving that car with no water pump spinning you've got a very good chance that you could boil the engine over which is exactly what the customer did he decided with his knowledge that there was something was wrong but the best thing to do was rather than contact us when we were open or even just drive around the corner which you know may not have been the best thing to do but it was only 500 yards away it certainly would have been a better idea to have done that than drive it 15 miles away back home with no alternate belt attached and no water pump spinning and then overheated the car uh, uh, numerous times managed to get it back on his driveway where it boiled over again and then got, uh, ruined his mum's driveway but it didn't end there because then they decided him and his parents that the best thing to do was when the car cooled down was put some more water in it cold water and then drive it again around the estate to see what would happen uh, basically cooked it again boiled over and then eventually decided that this isn't going anywhere and then rang us i mean just like why why would you do that Look, I understand some people don't have great mechanical knowledge, but when you've got noise coming from under your bonnet and you've got something flapping around, you can see bits of belt that have fallen off and there's clearly an issue. You've got oil and water on the floor and stuff like that, which is what's happened with this car. It's just not normal then to carry on driving the car, surely. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but I just think that was a bizarre thing to do. Not to overeat it once, but twice. So I'm speaking to the customer and obviously I'm getting this information from them. I'm sort of leaning on that. I'm sort of letting on now to say, look, you know, if you've driven this car knowing full well the auxiliary belt is not attached to it, you could have caused absolute catastrophic damage here. That's when the conversation sort of turned very quickly. They started to get a little bit sort of funny with me and really sort of backtracking a little bit and suggesting that maybe it didn't quite happen like that. And maybe just, you know, maybe the belt came off when more towards home and it only overheated a couple of times. We didn't drive it very far. It was just becoming a little bit of a mess now. So I thought, right, look, let's get this car picked up. Let's worry about what's happened later. Let's first establish what's happened and then we can deal it from there. So I got the car picked up, brought back here. What had actually happened, because why the auxiliary belt had come off, 
because it wasn't particularly old belt. It was the uh, an oil crank seal pulley. So on this car, it's got timing chain, oil crank seal pulley behind the uh, the crank pulley, little rubber seal. Uh, that had basically uh, started leaking. Oil had got past the seal and sprayed up the side of the engine. Now, this car actually had a new timing chain on it three months ago, which was a bit strange because that seal is actually brand new. It came in the kit with the chain. But nonetheless, it's still been leaking over a period of the last few months. It started sloshing oil at the side of the engine. It's then got wet. It's then got the auxiliary belt really soaking wet. And that's basically just fell to pieces, degraded, and then just sort of fell apart and then eventually snapped and come off the engine. So we now know what the cause is. But now I've got this horrible, horrible gut feeling thinking, well, I think they may have boiled this over, cooked it. There's really no water in the car left at all. It's not looking good. Like I say, it's been driven with no water in it. It's been boiled over a couple of times thinking, oh no, this is not going to be good. So the first thing we need to do is basically just get another auxiliary belt on it. So I'm not worried about the oil leak just yet because that is the least of our problems. Look, if we just put a belt on it and sent it out again, it might still boil over. But even if it didn't, you're still going to have the same problem happening again. But we just don't need to worry about that at the moment. We just need to establish if we need to be buying an engine for this car. And if we need to have that difficult conversation with the customer. So first of all, we've got a belt, cleaned off the side of the engine very quickly, put a new auxiliary belt on, start it up, and luckily, the engine sounded fine. It got to temperature, the fan was kicking in. It looked like so far so good. We then decided to press on. We're happy now the engine might not be terminal. Let's get this uh, crank seal sorted. So basically got a new seal. I got it from a different supplier this time. So basically got it from a, like another brand, another company, um, and changed that seal. Double check that, it's now not leaking. Put it down to basically just a dodgy seal, new in a box really, didn't much come in the kit. That's all we could really put it down to. No real other explanation, unless it's been nicked to court when going in. You just, you just don't know, who, who knows? The reality, whatever reason, the seal, the brand new seal wasn't working. Anyway, new seal in, solved the oil leak, belt spinning, gone out on it multiple times, put 10, 15 miles on it, tried to make it overeat, driving it like it's stolen, absolutely fine, no problems whatsoever. Car is running perfectly and doing exactly what it should, holding its water. So luckily, we managed to avert danger there, and I'm glad of that because that really could have been an awkward conversation because if they basically boiled the engine and it overheated, effectively it would have blown the head gasket or maybe warped the cylinder head, You'd have been looking at effectively having a new engine or a new cylinder at least. To be honest with you, we probably would have just gone down the route of putting another engine in it. And they're quite expensive, those Corsa engines, sort of 2010 onwards. Those engines went into a good run about five, six, seven years. We're putting the Corsas, they're very well sought after engines. You know, one of those, even sort of like a, a really higher mileage one, 80, 90,000 miles, you can still spend sort of six, 700 quid on one. And no doubt you'll end up putting a chain on it to put it back in the car. So you end up spending nearly a grand just trying to get an engine for it to get it resolved. And I was of the view of thinking, well, do you know what? I am absolutely 100% liable for the oil leak under the warranty and even the belt coming off it. And, you know, I would have sorted that out no problem at all. We, we, we sorted that out. But I'm thinking, had it blown up, I'd have to have that conversation with the customer saying, look, you know, this is really, you, you neglected this. You, you have basically been negligent and caused that further damage. I think the average person would realise that that is not a normal thing to do where you just basically carry on driving the car knowing the auxiliary belt has fallen off and it's overheating. And even when you became aware the first time when it overheated, to then go and do it again. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I'm just not having that. I think that was just a really silly thing to do. And I think the customer really should have been dipping their hands in the pocket if it had been a case of having to put an engine in. Now, I'd like to know your thoughts. What would you have done in my shoes if that had gone wrong? If the engine was knackered, it'd been 800 to a grand to put an engine in for it. And by the way, that would exclude fitting, which would have done as well. So it probably would even cost more than that if you'd have to be fitted by someone. But what would you have done? Would you be saying to the customer, I'm sorry, at that point when it overheated, not once but twice, I think you should be paying? Or would have had to have sucked it up and say, no, nope, sorry, it's causation. It's from the original fault. I'm sorry, I'm not willing to uh, pay for it. And maybe yeah, I should have uh, basically footed all the bill. I want to know your thoughts on that because I always like to hear different views. So let me know your thoughts in the comment. Anyway, the car is now back with the customer. We've had no issues, no faults. Like I said, it's been running perfectly ever since. So danger has been averted. Anyway, guys, if you've seen anything on the pitch that may have been of interest to you and you want some more information, please do not hesitate to contact us. I will update the Facebook page with some more vehicles. I've just took a look at pictures today, so we'll have some more stuff coming on this week so you can actually see more detail of the vehicles and proper descriptions as we start to restock the car pitch. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this one. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you all in the next one.